Member for West Perth, I invite you as the first woman elected to this parliament, and in fact, the first woman elected to any parliament of Australia, to deliver the address in reply to His Excellency the Governor and, of course, to deliver your maiden speech. On this, the 28th of July, 1921. Member for West Perth. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I move that the following address be presented to His Excellency in reply to the speech he has been pleased to deliver to us. May it please Your Excellency. We, the members of the Legislative Assembly of the Parliament of the State of Western Australia in Parliament assembled, beg to express our loyalty to our most gracious Sovereign and to thank Your Excellency for the speech you have been pleased to deliver to Parliament. I have much pleasure in submitting this motion. I stand here today in the unique position of being the first woman in an Australian parliament. God help us. No more of that, thank you. Continue, Member. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I know that uh, many people think that perhaps it was not uh, the wisest thing to send a, a woman into parliament, but uh, I believe that men need a reminder sometimes from women beside them that uh, will make them realise that all that can be done for the race and for the home. I have been sent here more from that standpoint than any other. You, Mr Speaker, would be well aware that everybody said when the elections began that there were three old women putting up for Parliament. Well, I am the only woman that got in. But then again, I am the only genuinely old one of the lot. It's a pity that pretty woman in Claremont didn't get in. Yes, well, I'm sorry she didn't get in too. Don't encourage them, Member. Yes, Mr Speaker. I only desire to say that I am ready to help honourable members to these ends. That is all I have come here for. And it is also my desire to seek the help of the honourable members, because that will be most necessary if women's opinion is to have any effect in Parliament. Who's cooking your husband's dinner tonight? I'll have you removed if I hear any more from you. Why aren't you at home with your children? My children are grown and have children of their own. They are quite capable of looking after themselves. Hey, what about your grandchildren then? That's quite enough. Sit down, please, Member. Uh, Sergeant at Arms, could you please remove that person from the gallery? Member, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. One of my great desires as a member would be to introduce a bill to allow women to be admitted to the bar. Which bar? The lounge bar or the public bar? Sit down, Member. Now, I'm on my feet. Show some respect to the new member. You're a wowser. Everybody knows that. Your poor husband probably needs a drink with a wife like you. Sergeant at Arms, lead that person out of the gallery. Thank you. Member, proceed. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Women should be allowed to practice law in this state. Now, another cause I would like to champion is the rights of women to inherit the estate of their deceased children. As the honourable members would be well aware, a great number of our fine young men perished in the war. Now, many of them left no will, and by law it was left to the father. The mother was left nothing, even if the parents were no longer living together. What if the mother remarries and the second husband gets it all? Or worse still, his children? Sergeant at Arms, remove that person, please. Continue, Member. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Honourable members would also be aware of the scourge of venereal disease that has descended upon this country and this state in the aftermath of the end of the war in 1918 and the return overseas from our soldiers. I wish to introduce a bill to make mandatory the reporting of that insidious disease that is tearing apart the homes of this state. It is disgusting that a woman should be talking about such things. 
You should be ashamed of yourself. Silence in the gallery! You might think you're very clever getting yourself into parliament, but you're still the daughter of a murderer. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Legislative Assembly of the Parliament of Western Australia on this Heritage Day, October 18th, 2015. Today, we will pay tribute to Edith Cowan, the first woman to be elected to an Australian parliament and only the second woman to be elected into a British parliament. Stranger in the house, stranger in the house, please remove this young boy. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think you will find that it is a young lady. Is it? <laughs> What's she doing dressed like that? Today, we will look at some of the remarkable achievements that Edith Cowan created and some of the remarkable changes that have occurred in the state and in Australia since Mrs. Cowan's election in 1921. Now, young lady, I am on my feet. Please stop talking and leave this chamber immediately. My name is Sophia Forrest, and it is a great honour to be here with you all in the chamber today. Member, did she just say she's a forest? I believe so, Mr. Speaker. I don't understand what's going on here today, Member, but if she's a forest, we might as well save our breath. We won't get a word in edgeways. <clears throat> I'm thrilled because two of my ancestors were members of this house. One, Sir John Forrest, who was the first Premier of Western Australia. The other was his brother, Alexander Forrest, who was Mayor of Perth. But today, it is Edith Cowan who is the focus of our attention. Just think, in 1899, Western Australia was the third place in the world behind New Zealand and South Australia to give women the vote. But it wasn't until 1921 that a woman sat in any Australian parliament. The second woman elected was also here in WA, with the election of May Holman in 1925. She was the first woman to represent the Labour Party in any Australian parliament. She was a member for the seat of Forest. Let's have a look at what's been achieved since then. WA had the first female cabinet minister in Australia, Dame Florence Cardell Oliver. I've never been made a dame. Would you have accepted the honour? No, I think I would perhaps have uh, considered it, yes. Mm, I'll bet you would have. The list goes on. There are female judges in every state of Australia, and there have been female speakers in many Australian parliaments. What? Did you hear that? Female speakers, that can't be right. Oh, I think it sounds marvellous, Mr Speaker. The Church of England and other churches now have female priests and female bishops too. What was that? Female priests? Female bishops? No, I think she's probably mistaken, Mr Speaker. Next, you'll have us believe there have been female Prime Ministers and female Premiers. Australia has had its first, for now, female Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. Western Australia had its first female Premier in Australia, Dr Carmen Lawrence, in 1990. There has been a female Governor-General, Dame Quinton Bryce. WA now has its first female Governor, Her Excellency the Honourable Kerry Sanderson. All this is a long way from 1921, where it was required that Edith Cowan be called Mrs. James Cowan on the ballot sheet for the election. And now Edith has a university named after her, and I'm a present student at the Edith Cowan University. Did you hear that, member? University named after you. That's one up on a damehood. <laughs> There's only one university, the University of Western Australia, Mr. Speaker. You know, Western Australia has gone from being one of the poorest of the Australian colonies to being one of the most prosperous states. Our nickname was the Cinderella Colony, and even in 1950, we were coined the Cinderella State. But it is the pioneer women of the state that we are honouring today, and the struggle and the burdens that they have had to overcome. We also honoured the Aboriginal women of this state whose struggle has been a much longer journey. Edith Cowan had quite a remarkable energy. She was a member of over 60 committees. She helped set up the Country Women's Association and the King Edward Memorial Hospital. She was on committees to help soldiers, nurses, children, promote education and, of course, advance the rights of women, young, old, rich and poor. To understand Edith's great drive and passion and energy, it's necessary to understand her incredibly sad childhood. When Edith was seven years old, her mother died in childbirth and her father, Kenneth Brown, remarried. However, he was a very violent and troubled no, man. No, stop there, please. That'll do. And he shot and murdered his second wife and was subsequently subsequently hanged at the Fremantle jail. This left Edith traumatised and it was a burden that she and her entire family had to shoulder for the rest of their lives. Edith overcame this terrible period of her life, however, by dedicating herself to others, despite having five children of her own. 
It was in this chamber in 1984 that a bill was introduced and passed to finally abolish capital punishment in Western Australia. I wonder what Edith Cowan would have to say about that. From that day in 1984, no WA family would have to live with the shame that Edith and her family had to shoulder since 1876. Edith Cowan suffered greatly during her long life, but went on to achieve great things. A lot has been accomplished since then, but there's still a long way to go. Of the 95 members of the West Australian Parliament, only 28 are women. Would Edith be satisfied with that? Certainly not. So to conclude, please join me in applauding the remarkable life and achievements of Edith Dirksy Cowan. I'm sure that if Edith were with us today, she would have been made a dame. Everyone, the women of Western Australia and Edith Cowan. Goods have been brought back, eh? Huh. I wonder who I should speak to. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here with us on Heritage Day. Goodbye. <laughs>